he's one of my favorite uh, players that I got to cover and humans that I got to meet. Um, there's really nobody like him, and he's got a new podcast that's coming out later uh, this month on Friday, May 22nd. Every Friday, a new episode of his podcast, Everyday Greatness, uh, will be out there. And the host of that show, uh, Ray Lewis, joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show. How are you doing, Ray? My friend, how are you? I'm doing fine. So if your podcast is called Everyday Greatness, I'm the first guest, right? Correct? <laughs> but right? sir, you know I that I can put you on immediately. Ray, you've been around me. You've been around me. You know how I, I operate, how I host, I know what how I do. You roll. I'm a leader. I know I'm, how you roll. I'm a leader of analysts, Ray. You know that. <laughs> I love it, my friend. How are you? you I'm good doing this time. I'm doing fine. Everybody healthy in your family? Everybody good? Yeah, Hopefully. man. Everybody's doing good. I'm knocking Everybody's on wood good. on that. Hey, uh, I'm just going to go right in. I've been wanting to ask you this question because everybody's been talking about it with the last dance uh, of Jordan. You watching this documentary, Ray? I've, yeah, I've, I've, I've saw enough of it. Okay. And, uh, and how Jordan, you know, the conversation that we're having right now about uh, this doc, uh, is Jordan's leadership and his method, his style of 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 demanding uh, from his teammates, and how uh, it really wore on him. It seems, but he didn't care. He basically said, "If you don't agree with me, it's because you haven't won anything." What do you think of when you hear that, Ray? Yeah, you know, look, we there are so many different um, styles of of leadership, and and take his, you know, in particular. Um, you know, that's, that leadership came from being denied something, you know? I mean, you go back and if you look, research Michael Jordan's history, it's one thing to watch it now and be like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe he was like that, you know? It's another thing to read his story enough to understand that one kid that was cut from a basketball team that they said he wasn't good enough to do it, you know, and the things that came along with that. And that comes, that builds a mentality, right? And and it's the exact mentality of the lion. A lion don't freaking hang out with hyenas. A lion don't get up and hang out with zebras. A lion take care of his pride every day. And Jordan had a mentality like a lion. Like he went at it, you know. It's, it's Kobe Bryant had had that had that mentality. Just and and sometimes you can look at it right as being, you know, a dictator and and really being harsh. And some of it can can really be viewed that way, Rich. Um, I tell you, somebody who changed my perspective about that was Mike Singletary. Um, when Mike Singletary coached me, huh. and, um, you know, there was a time on we was playing the Jets. i never forget it. And uh, um, Mike Nolan was the defensive coordinator at the time. He called a defense that I knew was not going to work. It wasn't the right defense to be in a run, you know, style offense. And I'm I'm losing my mind on the field, just losing my mind. And I came to the field, and, and, and this was captured on the sideline, of course, on video. Mm -hmm. But Singletary grabs me, and he says, look at me. He says, look at me. And, you know, I'm heated at this time, Rich. I'm, like, losing my mind. And he's like, look at me. And I'm like, okay, sir. I'm like, Coach, I'm looking. And he's like, right, you can't do this. There's no way you can do that. If we give you something, but it forever changed my leadership style. Why? Because I understood that you can't speak to everybody a certain way. So when you think about how Jordan did it, I'm telling you a lot of that comes from the things that he didn't have or was taken away from him before he was Michael Jordan. And that is, I, he didn't have a plan B, you know? And, 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 I'm, and I'm telling you, like, when you think about my podcast, like Everyday Greatness, the reason why I'm starting this podcast mm -hmm. for, for that, Rich, is that simple message. Like, <clears throat> don't, how many of us still to this day will sit down and question Bruce Lee to ask Bruce Lee, what is greatness? What is it? What, what turn, what, what made you turn that on and never turn it off? Right. A good friend of mine go, go home and a good friend of all of us, Kobe Bryant. Right. Wouldn't you want to know what that greatness is? Like why, why, what fired you? What, what got you ignited? And it's the same thing with, with, with Jordan. It's the same thing with Michael Phelps. If you can go down the line of all of these incredible stories of these these athletes and men who've done so many things, but we don't have the essence of it. And, and so when you watch this last ride with Jordan, all you saw was the essence of, I don't have a plan B. 
there's no there's no other option for me. This is what I'm I'm built to do this. I'm born to do this, and there's no other direction but straight forward to get this done. And look, some people some people can call it hard, some people can call it crazy, but if you if you get results the way that they had they got results. Listen, I don't never condone disrespecting a man to a certain way. Um, but there are certain leaders that were built with one mentality, and that is, I don't have a second option. You know, I talk to my kids, I talk to people around the world about that all the time. You know, social media and these new new outlets, and, and, and they, they've given us plan B. Mm-hmm. Rich, when I was growing up, I didn't have a plan B. There's no plan B. The, the, the only plan I had was a man to sit next to that's sitting across from me, he can't beat me. Why? Because he can't outwork me. What does that mean? The same same many jumpers that Michael Jordan shot behind that house. The same jumpers that Kobe Bryant shot behind that house when nobody else was down there, when when nobody else was behind that house. And those and that's the essence of of what a leader that you can't it's almost like you can't mold that again. Well, I mean, when it, you can't mold? Yeah, when ahead. it all comes down to it, though, Ray, is that you did at some point realize, and maybe it, it, another first battle Hall of Famer from your position had to get in your face to kind of uh, yeah. show you the mirror in that regard. Um, so, you know, the question is, is looking at Jordan and, you know, is he a nice guy or is he not a nice guy? Was he a good teammate? Was he not a good teammate? Uh, again, I don't know if you saw one of the documentaries over this weekend, him recounting how relentless he felt he had to be the fact that he had no plan b it kind of it, it, it wore him he kind of broke down at the end thinking about how he might be viewed ray and uh, i'm and, see, and that's what i'm saying rich that's the, the see and and that's the point in the middle of my career where mike singletary gave me a different outlook on what leadership is and right after that day Right after that, actually, me and him talk about it all the time, every time we see each other. But the next conversation we had from that point, Rich, Mm -hmm. instead of him teaching me football and how to make this play or make that play, we started meeting every Monday after film study. Me and him started meeting in our own linebacker room. Nothing about football. He brought his Bible opened up the Bible and started teaching me the principles of what a man should be like and the way a man should carry himself and the way a man, a man of humility that loves God speaks to other people. And and I'm telling you, like in the middle of my career, in the middle of my career, because of course, you know, when you're passing it, you just go, right? You go and you push, but, but, but you, you step on people and, and, and you crush people and you, and you, and you take and, and everybody in locker rooms and, and, and whatever it may be, everybody don't have your same drive. They don't have your same opportunity. They right. don't have your same ability. Right. They don't have it, right? So now you have to you have to find it differently. You have to find a way to push their buttons, and hopefully you don't do it to where they look at you and say, I hated him. That's right. You know? <laughs> I know, because that was part of what you heard from, <laughs> from some of his teammates, you know? I mean, yeah. th- th- Judd Bushler said they were afraid of him. Now I know I know I spoke to a lot of players who played with you, Ray, and they said they were afraid to come back to the sideline and look you in the eye if they blew an assignment or something like that. That I know. I've spoken to people like that. Yeah, but that was a that was a different point of accountability, right? That was me saying, You I'm I'm gonna hold you accountable. Mm-hmm. Me and you went over this. So now I'm gonna hold you accountable to that. So when you come to the sideline, don't give me no excuse. No, 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 no. Look, we're going to blow a coverage, right? Are you going to blow a coverage? Absolutely. Are you going to forget some? Absolutely. That's easy. But I'm talking about pure effort. Pure effort, Rich. And that's what, that's what my standard was, right? My standard was I'm going to set this bar so high that when you look at your leader, this is what the, the way your leader leads. But I will never, I never forget this. I never forget this. This is how I knew everything changed for me mm-hmm. and what my role was as a leader. Ladarius Webb, we're playing the Pittsburgh Steelers, and it's a third down and 23, right? Mm-hmm. Nobody gives up a third down and 23. 
right? The one thing you tell the corner is just turn around right. and just run. Just <laughs> let nothing get behind you, right? Right. And the ball gets behind him. And I'm sprinting downfield. And the first thing out his mouth was, uh, 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 I'm so-. I, said, I said, sorry. I said, sorry for what? I don't care about this play. I care about the next one. I want to know what your mindset is now that we've given that we've given that up. I'm not exaggerating. That kid entire career changed after that play. <laughs> what would the, what, yeah. what, what would the pre single Terry talk to Ray Lewis have said if he gave up a third and twenty three? I see and, 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 and that's what you can't you can't dictate it. Right. Right? Because it's it's, it's it comes from a place of, of, of not only passion, but they come from a place of, of, of hurt. They come from a place of pain. They come from a place of, why are you doing it? Like, it's, you know, like you, you, you're just enraged. And when you're in battle, you know, it, it takes a very calm warrior to understand how you must lead your troops. So, um, and, 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 and it became a gift. It became a true gift um, of mine that I really started to harness and realize that, you know what, Ray? This has this is much bigger than just sports. This is everyday life, no doubt. And, and what it, does so, that mean exactly? Yeah. And when yeah. it all and when it all came down to it, Ray, how many players did you text either before or after a game day Sunday that weren't on your team around the league towards the end of your career? How many people? Ooh. How many? Give me a number. Oh my. Of people Ooh, whose numbers Rich. you collected, and you wanted to check in with them. They're not on your team, but you just wanted to check in with them as colleagues, brethren, brothers, however you want to put it. How many? What was the oh, number? Oh, Rich. Give me a number. Rich, uh, oh, Rich, I don't know. <laughs> it's a lot, Rich. Give it's me a, a number. Lot. What is it? I, I don't know if I can give you a number. I, I can't. Was it about 100? I can't. Was it, was it triple yeah, digits? E- easily. Like, it's, it wouldn't, uh, that's what I'm saying. You can't count the numbers. Because let me tell you why you can't count the numbers, Rich. Because it still happens. I do it every other day. You know, it's, it's, it's and, 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 and that's what I'm saying about about true leadership, right? True leadership on a court or on the football field is only to obtain the goal of winning a championship, of game, whatever. My leadership changed. My leadership changed to, and this is why the numbers still come in, mm-hmm. the calls still come in, mm-hmm. because my leadership changed that I wanted to make men better men. Because if you have a better man, if you have a better man, you got a better football player. You got a better teammate. You got a better husband. You got a better father. You have all of these things if you make the man better, but you must make him hold himself accountable. That's where those phone calls to I don't care who it was I was playing against at the time. You know, I mean, if people would have people would have thought I was crazy the many times on a Saturday night that I'm going through the Bible reading to Tad Johnson. You know, <laughs> like and, 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 did it sink in, right? Like, did, right? Did it sink in with Chad, though? Did it sink in? <laughs> I think, I, I think, I think now when <laughs> yeah, you that's... listen to him, yeah, you do, right? You're sure. It's like, I know. I think now, man, that's it great. really does. And 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 that's the after. That's the after the game that makes it so relevant, Rich. That I'm telling you that I really appreciate. It's like me, like right now, right? The conversations that I have weekly with Bobby Wagner, or just just having these conversations with these kids over and over and over, you know, but then they, then they develop into these young men. And so then life starts to change because it goes from just football stuff to how do I become a better man off the field? How do I become a better businessman? How do So now all of those factors is kind of where I've transitioned to now. And so, yeah, I do go back into the game a lot, right? I, I, uh, me and Bobby go through a lot. I'm going out to the, um, well, Hopefully things get back to normal, but going back to just film sitting down with him because I think you know one of if he's he's probably one of the most um, one of the best linebackers that's you hey. know the middle backer in, Ray, the, in the getting the game now. Yeah, Ray, I think he's going to share that room in Ohio with you, and it's all said and done for him. I think for I sure. like him. I like that kid. Me I too. love him as a person. He's one of the most humble kids. He's great. And I've field. ever been around. Um, too. And he has a great chance to, to, to definitely put on that gold jacket. <laughs> Ray, good luck with the pod. Um, again, you need that first guest about everyday greatness. I will um, have you. Don't you worry. I want I'm everybody here. that's listening to this. I will be calling Rich Eisen to be on my podcast because I need to know what everyday greatness is. 
from your perspective. I, I know exactly what it is, Ray. Uh, I just had it over the last 15 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> I love it, my friend. You You're take, awesome. Right back at you, Ray. Let's uh, let's chat again hey. soon. And I'm uh, seriously, you need me on your pod. I'm I'm there for you. Always. No, I'm done. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm putting you on for sure. Fantastic. We're in. Congrats, All Ray. Right, Congrats on the pod. Right, Look friend. forward Thank to seeing you, what you got. That's Ray Lewis right here. We could go on and on with Ray. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.